Through the 1930s, 40s, and into the 50s, this chap, Raymond Lowy, was responsible for a lot of the beautiful Art Deco designs that we associate with the time. Here is a toaster that Raymond Lowy designed. He did many of these. This thing is gorgeous. I have one like this myself. And I have a Proctor toaster that's just beautiful. He, uh, he is really who defined how these things looked. This is a, uh, a Helicrafters TV. Bob Anderson did one of these, a restoration of one of these, on his YouTube channel. You should check it out if you're interested in televisions. He did a great job. Raymond Lowy designed this, too. Here's Lowy in 1941 in his design studio. He was already a very successful designer and in high demand. Here's a 1947 Studebaker Champion Starlight Coupe. I love Studebakers mostly because of the styling, and I think that's probably true for most people. Raymond Lowy designed this as well. Here he is with his custom 1961 Jaguar Series 1 E-Type. I actually like the design of this quite a bit, and if you look at the front end of this, this thing really was kind of a predictor of things to come. This car looks an awful lot like cars that came around in the early 2000s. It's a nice looking car. And uh, I think he did a great job. And I almost like this better than the original Series 1. Beautiful. I wish these things had been available because I probably would have bought one. Basically, this front face consists of the dial background. You know, the dial, um, I, I don't know, I just call it background or dial plate. The dial pointer and the mechanism which drives the dial pointer and this mechanism is driven by the motor which also drives the tuning condenser so here's how it works make sure I'm on camera here okay this motor here this is uh, looks to be it's a reversible motor three terminal motor okay these two terminals here are connected to white wires right here if you can see that that Okay, and then this black wire is connected to this, cent this sort of center terminal on this motor. This motor drives the shaft, okay, through a little, a very small pinion gear that comes out of the motor. Okay, there's a very small pinion right there. Sorry about the cruddy, this is the all I use for, uh, uh, for flux, so it's a little cruddy. Anyway, there's a small pinion that comes out of the, that's connected to the motor, which drives this larger gear right here. And the larger gear is on the shaft with the manual tuning, this is the manual tuning knob shaft. But also, on that same shaft are the friction, is the friction device that turns this large friction disc. And this is very much like an older radio in this way, with the friction disc, you know, this little pinch disc right here, so the friction disc rides in this groove and that groove is shaped like a V and there's there's a spring here that kind of keeps that thing compressed on this disc so it gives it the ability to move and turn the disc you can see the action there motor with the pinion gear drives the spur gear spur gear has the manual tuning shaft on it and it also has the friction disc drive wheel right here it applies the right amount of pressure to the friction disc you can see right here the friction disc has a pulley on it and um, that pulley drives the bronze cable for the tuner, uh, the dial pointer, okay? So now we have the dial pointer moving, right? It it's moves because of the pulley that's on this friction disc. Also that friction disc drives a gear reduction which ultimately drives the shaft for the tuning condenser. So the gear reduction from the friction disc it turns a, a smaller, like a large pinion gear in there. Now, I, I don't know the names of these gears, so I'm doing the best I can. And it, that pinion gear drives a double spur gear that is the kind that's, that's spring-loaded. That thing takes up any play that's in the system, that double gear right here. The, every radio that has a drive like this has one of these. This whole thing with the coupler drives the condenser. And on the back side of the condenser is the preset tuning disc, which deals with all the electric, electrical parts of the presets, which I won't deal with right at the moment. So this big assembly I've cleaned. 
I've polished up, I've cleaned the bronze cable so that it, it uh, doesn't have any problems with friction on the, on the pulley. I've cleaned the friction disc, okay. The friction disc, I didn't need to do anything like sanding it or adding any bite to it like I do on some. This one seems to work fine. Cleaned all these gears. Now the thing is, a lot of people start lubricating these things. These are brass gears. I don't need to lubricate these. They're fine unlubricated. Even the steel ones that with, that, with this double spring gear doesn't really need any lubrication. It's, it's, there's enough play in there, enough looseness, it's going to be fine. It doesn't turn fast, so it's not going to get hot or anything like that. So it really doesn't need lubrication. And what happens when you lubricate it, it just gets sticky. It just dries and gets hard and gets sticky, and then it messes things up later. So I clean those up. You see how nice and easy that turns. You really don't want to put lubrication in the motor. That can mess up the motor too. The motor is fine. Motor turns fine. The, uh, the steering coupler, which I, that's what I call it, is in good condition. I'll leave that be. I had, when I used to do old Volkswagens, I used to make my own of these. And I made them out of thick, thick uh, laminated rubber, kind of like the way tires are made with, with layers of rubber with cord, rayon cord in between to make them strong. And then I would put space, you know, I'd put these uh, bushings in there and connect them up. Well, this is very much like that. If I had to make one of these, I could. Not a big deal, though. I don't need to. This is all in assembly. It's all ready to go. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to basically, I'm going to, I'm going to solder some extension wires on this, these motor terminals so that I may connect these wires here up to it from a distance so that I don't have to worry about damaging it trying to you know have four hands holding things up. So I'll, I'll, I'll run about a six inch extension wire for each of these. Once I get the motor all connected up, then I'll fit it onto the deal here. And then I will get this plate installed. Now I might as well show you, I have polished this plate. And I put some car wax on it a little while ago, so that car wax is dry now. So I'll go ahead and buff that off of there. And this plate just looks fantastic. This is the front instrument panel, so to speak or knob panel, control panel, and it looks great. I don't think it's looked this good in 30 years. So that's these kinds of things really matter. They don't matter functionally, but they certainly matter with the perceived value of the set. And so you try to get these right, because when an owner sees their set and they see something that looks good, in their mind, that's a good radio. And it's much easier for them to, to enjoy the sound of their radio if they liked it the way it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and once that is installed, well, this thing shouldn't corrode for years. And you see the lettering on this thing looks really good. I've got a cat crawling through my tool box. Out you go. Both of you, out you go. You see the lettering on this looks really good. That's going to mount on here when that's all said and done. Once this part, once this whole tuning arrangement is on there, and that will virtually complete my work on... Yikes. That will virtually complete my work on this front section here. These are all clean. Clean these up. They're ready to go back together. And uh, I don't see any reason to horse with these other than I've got to brush them off, clean them off, blow them out and then blow through them with some contact cleaner and deoxid. So those are the things I'm going to do here in the next little while. I will check back with you once I get all that done. That's all pretty boring stuff. There's no point in, in having you watch all of that. It'll get kind of tedious for you. So uh, let me do that work, and then I'll get back to you with what's next. Okay, let me show you what I did with this motor here. I just noticed my soldering iron might be in the way. This, uh, this, these wires here on the chassis attached to these motor leads, as I described earlier. Trouble is, these wire leads are really short, and it's going to be hard to work on this motor. I showed that scenario a little while ago. So what I did was I added some pretty good length to wire solder directly to these leads. Now, I will go ahead and assemble this onto the chassis, and I will either attach this wire... I'll remove these original wires and attach these wires in their place, or I will splice the wires together, depending on the situation uh, inside the chassis here. 
So that will make it possible, even if I do splice them, it will make it possible to pull this front section off in the future and service this motor without disconnecting it. So maybe one wants to get in here and, and take, take the cover off and clean the bearings. Or maybe one wants to lubricate the bearings or that kind of thing. It, it would be possible to do that without completely disconnecting the motor and make it a lot faster. So once I've got these, uh, once I've got this installed, we'll take a look at where these wires need to go. I installed the tag. At first I polished it and then I installed the tag to the back of this this uh, station preset panel. It looks pretty good I think. So I, I recognize that the chrome isn't perfect but the chrome looks a lot better and it's not changing. It's not corroding or anything. I put uh, several coats of wax on this so it's in pretty good shape. I think that that tag looks really nice. See the serial number on it? The lettering is all very clear. It, it was quite dirty and there was even some corrosion in spots, some really light corrosion that I cleaned up with some of uh, some polishing compound. I'd like to show you what I use for this sort of thing. I like to use this right here. This is 3M. This is a, an auto body product. I used to restore cars and so this product is handy for that. This is um, extra cut compound. It is the extra cut rubbing compound. Um, Perfect it is their the the brand series name. So there there are several different part numbers in this series. One is an extra cut. One is a a swirl mark remover. That sort of thing. And the part number you can get this on Amazon. You can go to any auto paint store and you'll find this stuff. The zero six zero six zero. This container is probably three years old. This lasts in the radio world lasts a long time. So this is a full quart of this stuff and I'm telling you it lasts a long time. I do shake it every time because what happens is the abrasive tends to want to settle in the bottom and you get a little bit of stratification in this where it's more liquid up top and it's more grainy at the bottom so you shake it real well so you get it to be like it's supposed to be. And you can see from the label this is an old package but this still works great. I don't like to let it freeze so I keep it indoors. And uh, I just use it like any rubbing compound. This is just about the best there is. And uh, I use it to clean up labels like that when I want to put the final finish on like that condenser cover. You know, I'll, I'll polish that. Con that's how I polished this condenser cover. It looks really nice. Other things too. It's just a nice polish that uh, puts a great shine on it. Now I have loosely installed this condenser cover. I'm going to bolt it down here shortly but I wanted to get it in place and kind of protect that condenser because I've been working around this chassis so that's looking really good. I think this this chassis is coming together nicely. Check this out guys. This is a 1947 Greyhound GX1. This is the predecessor of the Scenic Cruiser that everyone knows so much about. I almost bought one of these. This bought 15 years ago. I almost bought one of these. And I'm looking at it and crawling around looking underneath it. And uh, I got in it and started it. And I had a, a Detroit diesel engine in the back. It was wonderful. But then I started thinking about it. I lived in a small town in central Illinois. And I knew everybody and everybody knew me. And I started thinking about what are they going to say? Uh, are the cops going to let me keep this thing? Uh, probably not. So I decided against buying it. But I, sometimes I wish I had. This is a 1955, I think, Greyhound Scenic Cruiser. Raymond Lowy designed this thing. These are gorgeous, and these became an icon in, in America. This, these kind of represented traveling and going coast to coast in the United States and really are reminiscent of a time that is long gone, but still it's kind of neat to look at the machines. All right, well, this is a good time for me to wrap it up, and I'll pick up working on this uh, receiver chassis here in the next video. From Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.